rolling. Cool. Hey guys, so this video is going to be slightly different, actually majorly different to all the other videos I've been making, which is just teaching maths. In this video, I thought to myself, because you only have about just two months or just over two months left to your GCSE and A-level maths exams, I thought, let me take the camera out, speak to you guys one-on-one -on -one, and share some of the things that I did when I was in your position that actually helped me to get through this. Look, it's not, it's a challenging time. It's a stressful time. You have a lot of pressure from parents, teachers, whatever you know however you want to look at it and a lot of the times it can make you feel like you know you're you're not really getting anywhere because of all this pressure coming into you and i think the way you want to do this and the way you want to kind of look at this stuff first is you like whether you're doing gcc or levels you're going to have many subjects to revise okay and you need to prioritize i think the first thing that i did i remember was to prioritize and uh, what do i mean by this look at your weakest topics your weakest subjects now, if you're strong at your subjects, for example, like let's say you're strong in maths, you don't need to focus so much in maths. Like I did not focus a lot in maths because I realized, well, I'm quite good at this. I know how to do it. Why am I repeating myself? It doesn't make sense. I just, I'm just going to repeat myself and waste my time. So instead of focusing on the str my stronger subjects, I looked at the weaker subjects. Like science for me was a bit weak, especially the biology side, because my memory is not, I can't retain information that much. So I'm more of a numbers guy. I realized that after. So... I knew, okay, I need to put more focus on the subjects that I struggle with. So when you prioritize, look, list down all your weaker subjects, the ones that are your weakest. So how can we determine weakest? Well, look at your grades, right? The grades that you've been getting so far, which one you struggle with and which one you got lowest. Those are the ones that you want to focus more on. And the strongest ones, which the ones that you got highest grades, I'm not saying completely eradicate it. Of course, do some work on it, but you don't need to do that much work because if you're good, you're good. You don't need to waste time. It's a waste of time just doing it. And once you've figured that figured it out, so once you figured it out, once you figured which one is your weakest and which one is your strongest, you then want to put a timetable if you haven't done so already. Like you want to make sure that you have a timetable for every day. Okay, how am I going which subjects am I going to revise on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, etc. etc. And just before I go on, I just realized something. You should be done, like 98% of your syllabus in all the subjects you should have covered. You should have pretty much covered all the syllabus by now. You should have. And it should just be exam papers, revision now. So if you haven't covered your syllabus or you haven't covered topics, you need to make sure that you get that done first because the exam papers, like there's no point of you doing exam papers if you don't know the topic. If you don't know the 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 actual topic that your the exam is going to be based on, there's no point. So you've got to make sure you do that. So I think most of you guys are there, but let me know in the comments if you're not. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. So if we go back to our prioritizing, so prioritize your time on the week, Monday to Sunday, what subjects you're going to do first. Now, in the Easter holidays, because Easter holidays are coming up, I used to, I remember this is what I did, right? Because Easter holidays, you don't have to, school, you don't have to go to school, so you have more time to yourself. I literally woke up at 6, 5.45-ish, and I did from 5.45 literally up to 12, 12.30, so like six, six and a half hours of study. Now, let me explain why I did this. I did this because I didn't want my revision to be the whole day. There's no point of doing quantity. Quality is more important. And what I did first, when I started, when I woke up, I went with my weaker subjects. So weakest for me was biology. What else was it? Biology, chemistry, and I think RE. Those were my weakest and geography as well. I think, yeah, so I can't remember exactly, but I think those were the ones. So what I would do is I would set a time. So I think for biology, I'll set like one and a half hours or two hours. And I did that every day. And then after that, once I finish, I go to geography, then I go to RE. And then I go, so my strongest subjects are the ones more at the end. The reason why I did this is because I want to put the my whole effort and focus and time on the weaker subjects. And then the ones that are my strongest, I don't need to put that much focus because I'm pretty good at it. So what I did is I did that through literally Monday to Saturday, I think. Yeah, Monday to Saturday, I did that for six and a half hours. And then the rest of the day, I wouldn't work too much. Because when, if someone comes and tells you, oh, I work for 12 hours, it's like, yeah, you work for 12 hours. But how much in that 12 hours did you actually do deep work? That's a question you have to kind of think about because I realized there's no point of me doing 12 hours, 10 hours, 10, 12 hours of studying if I can't get most of, if I can't actually process what I'm learning. There's no point. And then the next day, I'm going to be tired, which messes up my next day and the next day. So I don't want that. I'd rather have quality time, quality study, quality focus, and then that's enough. Now, you probably be thinking like, okay, why did you do that? every single day like for you know monday to saturday like biology at the beginning geography re and you know all the other subjects 
Now, the reason why I did this was, so my, the way my brain works, maybe you guys are like this, I don't know, is I can't retain information. Like for me to memorize the information, it's very difficult. I can't just read it first the first time and then mem like, get it like being in my head. I can't do that. So the only way I can do that, and I figured, was repetition. Every day I repeat myself, repetition. Every day I do biology, every day I do geography, every day I do RE, every day I do chemistry, and I just keep reading, repeat, repeat, repeat. And the more repeat repetition I do, the quicker it becomes, like, the, big, the quicker I can register in my mind. So that was the reason why I did, you know, in that manner. So biology every morning, six every morning for one and a half, two hours, okay, read. You know, the CGP books, all these kind of things, right? They're very short, very precise, and I'll do that every single day. And I realized that after a certain time, yeah, you, you actually, before you, you realize that when you read the next thing, you actually, you're able to recite it before even reading the next sentence because now you've, you're so used to it now, right? So that's when you know it's working. So that's what I did. And um, the stronger subjects, those were done more at the end because I, like I said, I did not need that much focus. I did not need that much concentration because I knew most of it. So that's one thing that you guys can do if you haven't, if you're not doing already, that helped. That helped me a lot. And... The way you can deal with like the psychology side of things, the stress is cut, cut other people off, like cut people, like people, like your friends or, you know, other friends or whatever, they'll come and just kind of put negative thoughts or they'll say, oh my gosh, have you advised for this and this? And then it kind of creates a unwanted pressure. And what you want to do, and this is what I did is I completely did not talk to anyone. Like during my study period, like during the Easter holidays, during my revision period, I just cut everyone off, even family to be fair. I just went in my room, I said, okay, I'm going to wake up at this time and I'm going to do this amount of hours and I do not want any disturbance. And the reason why I did that was because when you're in that deep work state, it's very easy to get distracted. It's very easy to just kind of or something happens and now you kind of lose your chain of thoughts and then you have to start again and that takes a lot of willpower as well so i just didn't talk to anyone and you know i told them listen i'm going to be revising so i just don't want to be this time unless you're doing group study and you're doing group sessions that's a different that's a different uh that's different but if you're kind of needing to revise for yourself you know you want to make sure that you're completely completely zoned in and when it comes to phone social media i completely no i wasn't in it I deactivated all these kind of things. I didn't, I mean, to be fair, we didn't have Snapchat back in the days, but even like we had Facebook and all these things, I completely stopped that. I did not even look, I did not go on the internet, nothing. It was just literally books and study. And when you do that for quite for quite some time, you start to you start to form a habit and you actually start to enjoy it more. And I think that's where, so just coming back to how to deal with the stress side of things is your stress level will start reducing. Why? Because you're not listening to external distractions, external voices, other people saying this, have you done this, have you done that? You're not listening, you're not taking that in, you're not registering. Because you set yourself a timetable, you set yourself a, okay, this is how much I'm going to be doing, these are the goals that I need to achieve, these are the weaker subjects I need to focus on. And because you're not letting those external voices come in, your stress level starts reducing, you know? So that could really help you guys out. I, it helped me out a lot, tremendously. So I'm pretty sure it can help you guys out. And look at it this way, right? So some people will say, oh, you know, I want my social side. I want this as well. But look at it this way. You're revising for a period of time. Your exams are going to be in May, June. After June, you have the whole summer holidays. You can relax. You can go anywhere you want. You can do whatever you want. For this period of time, don't you think it's, okay? don't you think it's good just to make sure you put everything in so that when the results come, you don't feel any sort of regret thinking, I wish I could have studied more. I wish I could have worked harder. I wish I could have focused more. I wish I was not distracted. You don't want to have any of those thoughts when the results they come. So in this period of time, it's not that much period of time to, that you have, like two and a half, two, month, two months, two and a half months, it's not that much. But in that period, you can do a lot. And then once your exam's finished, listen, man, go do whatever you want. Go chill, go relax, whatever. Obviously until exam results day, but you get what I'm saying? So yeah, I would say just, just put the effort in do it now because you don't when results they come you do not want to have that regret thinking like man i wish i did this i could have done this if you've put everything in and you didn't get the results that is fine because you know in your heart of your heart that you've given it your all and that is absolutely okay so i would say that just put it in put the work put the effort in now when it comes to so that's one part or a couple of parts whatever you know so that's one part now, when it comes to exam um, exam practice, so when it comes to exam practice, like practicing exam questions, for example, with maths, once you know all the topics, it's just practice, papers, 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 papers. And when you do papers, whether it's maths, geography, English, whatever, well, okay, English is a bit different, but like biology, chemistry, um, and the other subjects, maths. 
So when it comes to exam questions, when it comes to answering exam questions, this is the thing that I've noticed people do wrong and it's not good. And this is this, this thing of memorizing the answers or thinking like, oh, if a question comes like this, this you have to memorize. And what I always would do is you need when you do the exam questions, you need to go in the mindset that you've never seen that question before. And don't try and recall from the past exam papers that you did because the reason why you don't want to do that is say in the exam they give you an exam question that is a completely different question which most of the time it will but it's a completely different question that requires you to think how are you going to answer that you can't recall based on the previous exam question because it's a totally different question so that's a mistake that a lot of people do which is try and memorize past exam question answers so when they do these exam question practice they just recite it from there and then write the answers this there and then say oh yeah look i got the exam question right you didn't get the exam you got the exam question right but you got it right by just memorizing as opposed to actually thinking about it so when you do these exam questions whatever subject it is go in with the mindset that you've never done this before and don't try and recall from the memory that you did before like don't try and recall from the answers that you did before it's a very bad way of doing it and i think i i made that mistake a lot when i was practicing and i had to cut that out because i knew when the actual exams come if they come up with a different type of questions i'm absolutely screwed i am finished so um yeah that's that's something that could be very valuable for you guys too and um another thing i would say as well during these periods of time when you're revising like and you're revising intensely go out for walks you know do have breaks like when i'm saying you know i did for six and a half six six and a half hours i was doing it like straight on but then after i did have breaks as well right now some people can do that. Some people need a break like for 10 minutes here. Do that. Get the body walk. Some people can do that, but get the body walk. Some people could do it straight. Others cannot. And they need a bit of break just to take a you know, step back. And that is absolutely fine. But you, make, you must make sure. But you must make sure that your break is just a break and there's no distractions. And then you get back into it again. Okay, that's very important. Um, what else? What else? I would say also, yeah, during the like, obviously during your study period, have like one day off one day completely off from revision because you don't want it to become so like you don't want it to consume your life so so much i know it is consuming your life but you also want to take a break from all these studies that you you've been doing so that when you come back the next day you feel refreshed you feel ready to go and it's more sustainable that way so definitely have a break whether it's on a weekend saturday sunday you, you decide you can decide for you for me i took sunday off because i was just like man i need to chill man i've been working from monday to saturday non-stop and i need to chill i need to relax um so yeah take a day off that can help you guys out now this debate i, I did mention this before but this debate of how many hours of studies you should put it's you shouldn't really look at it like that you should look at how much are you doing how much deep work are you actually doing that is actually valuable the quality not the quantity so don't listen to other people saying oh, what did 10 hours of revision or what did 12 hours of revision man that's complete crap man like it's like don't, don't listen to other people that say, oh, I did 10 hours of revision or 12 hours of revision. Yeah, that's all good. But you need to know in yourself, if you, you can do that 10 hours and 12 hours in five hours, you actually can. It depends on your quality and your focus and your level of um, you know, commitment to what you're doing. If you're able to focus very, very well and you're able to get those information, you don't need 10, 12 hours. 10, 12 hours is probably people that's just like literally you know, doing other things at the same time. That's not real work. That's not deep work. Deep work you can't do for 10, 12 hours. It's very difficult. Your mind is, is I, it's, I can't even do it, right? So don't, don't look into that so much. Just set a timetable for yourself. Set the things that you need to do. Look at the goals. What do you need to achieve? What topics do you need to provide? What exam papers do you need to do? And start doing it from that perspective and start doing it from there. So as you, you can see, right, as you're doing all these things, your mindset will start changing. And the mindset will start changing in the sense that you're not going to be as stressed. You're not going to be as anxious. It's normal to do to have that in the exam before the. It's normal to have that in the morning before the exam or during when the exam period comes, like when it's nearer to the time. It's normal because it means you care. But as you're doing this, you will start to see that your level of stress, your level of pressure, your level of anxiety will reduce because you're putting the work. You're putting the work, and you can see it. You can actually see it. So that's what I would say, and you can actually see it. What I would, um, another thing that you guys can do if it helps you is to put some visualization. So what do I mean by visualization? Like keeping a track record of your revision. So you can literally have a calendar and you can have your subjects. I literally list down your subjects, right? And then for each day, you put those subjects. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And the time as well. And as you do them, tick it. 
take it. Okay, Monday I was I, I was I wanted to do biology in the morning and then chemistry and then physics, and then take it as you're doing it, right? As you finish revising, and then you do that for all the other days. The reason why that's so powerful is when you look back, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I did all of this stuff and it's all ticked. And then you don't, and it's interesting, it's like in a competition within you, it's like you actually don't want it, you want to keep ticking them. So you don't want to miss a day because now you've got a nice track record. So that's very, very powerful. And visually, it will allow you to see how much work you've actually done. And that's also another way of, that's another way to give you more motivation, but it's also another way of giving you confidence and knowing that you've put the work in so you don't need to feel as stressed because you can see your facts, you can see the evidence that you've actually done. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think that so, so, <clears throat> so yeah, um, these are the, some of the things, these are, so yeah, these are things that I did. I hopefully, so yeah, these are things that I did. Hopefully it can help you guys out. Listen, put anything down in the comments that you need help with advice or tips or whatever. I'm more than happy to help you guys out. I know this is going to be a bit of a stressful period, um, but listen, you'll get through it. Just keep at it. Stay focused. Focus on you. Don't focus on anyone else. And listen, once that's, this is all done, you have the whole summer period just to relax and chill. And then we move on to the next stage. Okay. Take care guys. Peace.